Good afternoon. My name is David Bayada, CEO of Bayada Home Healthcare. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, and this is your CEO update, which up until now has been a daily update, but based on all of your feedback and the continued evolution of our situation, we have decided to reduce the frequency of this update to twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. Our hope then is to make the update a little meatier with a little more information, some key critical organizational information, uh, as well as some continued reflections on some of the amazing and inspiring work that's happening all over the country here at Bayada. Uh, so first, it's important for me to underscore how important your feedback has been. Completing the survey, sharing emails, reaching out either directly to me or to your team in your local office, through your director, your division director, your feedback's really important. Things seem to be changing and evolving daily, and we're constantly trying to stay connected with what it is you need to stay safe, to be supported, to keep your clients safe, and continue to get out into the community to help keep your clients safe and independent at home. So thank you for your feedback. It's critically important, and please keep it coming. And with that, I did want to uh, start with an update from our Chief Clinical Officer, Nora Triola, who's going to talk a little bit about some of the evolution of uh, the guidance and the evidence about symptoms. Nora, why don't you kick it off? Sure, David. Thanks. And uh, again, I come to you uh, in great appreciation for all that you have uh, done and continue to do. And I bet, uh, like you, you wonder, you know, we've been through this a couple of weeks now, so how, how many clients have we actually served? And it's amazing to me um, to report to you that through your efforts, you've been able to serve over 400 clients successfully and, and enable them to remain at home, to regain um, some of their important quality of life and um, to manage through this pandemic. Many of those um, were COVID positive clients, obviously, uh, 400 of them. Um, some started as pending and then uh, the results came in and they were positive. And uh, you've uh, been on top of the evidence and made sure that you were keeping yourself safe and were also able to deliver uh, exceptional care. So uh, again, it, it's across all practices and it speaks to uh, what I think uh, Chris, David, and I and, and others in the leadership team are so proud of, it, which is that when you were faced with this challenge, you learned what you needed to learn, you paid attention to the protocols and the tools, and you uh, went out to do what it is uh, you do every day uh, that makes uh, this organization just so special. So in, in deep gratitude, I wanted to start our conversation with that, that 400 uh, clients were able to be successfully transitioned uh, to a home setting, and that's just a, a wonderful thing um, for, for them and for us. Um, and now, you know, I think that that brings us to the second thing that I wanted to talk about before I turn it over to Chris, which is really uh, the important uh, change in the CDC recommendation for uh, additional symptoms to be added to the symptom screening tool. And so that, that symptom screening tool is a tool that you use for yourselves and the clients that you serve as well as, well as those clients. And so you were really good for uh, all the weeks that we've been doing this and paying attention to three key symptoms. And now there have been other symptoms that have been added to that um, based on what we're learning about the, uh, the virus and how uh, the CDC has informed us that really we need to add these additionally. And you guys were right on top of it because you were reporting in uh, into COVID box and to your directors and your clinical managers that you were seeing some things that made you suspicious. So you were thinking about that, that taste and, and change in smell or, gee, some of our clients are reporting a headache. So so remember now, uh, we're gonna pay attention to those three critical things, those um, three symptoms that have always been part of this, this corona, uh, the COVID-19 um, virus. So that cough, the fever, and any shortness of breath. They've changed the shortness of breath and added 
you know, any difficulty breathing. But we knew that shortness of breath was that difficulty breathing. Then we have chills and, and chills that, that are shaking. We have headache, sore throat, and uh, the, the loss of taste and smell as being the additional factors. So those are gonna be added to your screening tool. If you use the paper tool today, they are updated on the uh, web, uh, on the portal so that you can get them uh, as well as they were in my Thursday uh, email and they will be in today's email. Um, they also are being cascaded into your electronic and, and different practice ways uh, of collecting assessment data. So if you use home care, home base, for example, the, that will be reprogrammed into um, the, the source system so that you won't have to remember those symptoms. In fact, you will be able to see them as part of your, your screening, either for the, the clinicians that go into the home or the clients that we serve. And really that should be done every time we get ready to go into a home to make sure that we're looking for that symptomatology because one of the things that we know is that sometimes they could be very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all so you're looking at the baseline compared to how your client or how your clinical staff feel today and and making sure that they are ready um, and then properly protected if in fact they are de demonstrating any kind of symptoms so uh, the second slide is and uh, the slide that that is up now are the tools that are available they're both the screening tools on the left and on the right are the educational tools. So hopefully that'll help. Remember, if you, if you think about what could I do this week um, to pay even more attention, probably the symptom screening is, is something I'd like you to think about extra specially this week as you uh, continue to do the exceptional job you do caring for our clients every day. So thanks. That's great. Thanks, Nora. Let's turn it over now to Chris Toscano. Uh, to give us an update on our PPE sourcing and pipeline. So um, first I want to start with, you know, again, my gratitude, as Nora said, for all of the hard work that all of you are doing. And um, our supply team has really, really been working super hard to make sure that you all have the PPE that you need to, to provide care to our clients each and every day. So um, our team has really been, um, for the last five to six weeks, um, it's hard to believe that it's been that long, uh, has been sourcing and, um, and are really starting to um, have some wins and, and really start to see supplies come into our central supply warehouse and distribution center that we've set up at our global support center in Pensauken. So we've been sourcing supplies uh, locally right near some of your own service offices. We've also been um, sourcing supplies within the United States. We've also had to source some supplies internationally, which obviously take longer to get here because they're coming either by air or sometimes by a freight liner. So, um, but what I'm happy to report is that we are definitely starting to make progress and actually starting today um, are moving to what we are calling more of a push model rather than a pull model. So we have started um, sending out supplies to uh, your service offices, to all of our service offices in the areas that are really seeing an increase in the number of COVID positive clients. So we are, we are um, anticipating that this will help with um, some of the, the PPE shortages we've seen and, and really been trying to react to and move to more of a proactive approach rather than reactive. So um, want you to know, as David talked about earlier, that we've, we've heard you and we're working super hard behind the scenes and all of the hard work that you are doing is inspiring us to work even harder to find uh, more supplies so that you can continue to care for our clients. That's great. Thanks, Chris, and congrats on all the hard work. It's, uh, I'm here at the Global Support Center, and the boxes keep piling up, and now they're starting to get shipped out, and so the, the wheels are in motion. It's amazing to see, and I'm excited to continue to adapt every single day to all the needs that are emerging out there so we can keep our, our team safe uh, and our clients safe as well. So now I want to transition and end with an amazing video that was submitted proactively by one of our clients uh, in the Southeast, in South Carolina, um, as an expression of gratitude to all of you out there. Uh, please enjoy this video and we will see you on Friday. Hi, I'm Lamont Andre. When this COVID-19 pandemic uh, first started, 
I was like everyone else. I was quite unnerved. I was uncertain. I didn't quite know how my life would be affected by this. And you compound that with the fact that I have spinal muscular atrophy and I rely on attendants who come in and out of my house every day so that I can live life independently. And to be honest with you, I was a bit nervous about this. I wasn't sure how this was going to play out for me. Now, I have a great team of attendants. The people who come in and take care of me, they're amazing. But of course, the world changed with COVID-19 and this coronavirus thing. And so those fears, those anxieties were actually becoming real. Would I be able to live independent in the community? Would I be able to maintain my life the way that it was? Well, as the days and weeks went on, I found out that absolutely, yes, I could. Not that my life was normal, whatever a normal life is, because everybody's life changed, but I was still able to remain independent in the community on my own. And that was only because of the dedicated people from Bayada. I, I started with Bayada initially because I saw how professional they worked with other people that I knew. And when they came in, I was like, wow, this is absolutely the best agency that I had ever worked with. But of course, when the world changed for everyone, those things, well, honestly, they came into question. But consistently and reliably, my people showed up every single day. Yes, some things changed because now we had precautions that we didn't have before. There were questions that were asked that weren't asked before. But the quality of my life did not change. The confidence that I have that I can remain free in the community, independent, on my own. Well, it remained. And that's because Bayada is truly being committed to your core values. When I think about your core values of compassion, excellence, and reliability, you guys didn't just wordsmith that. You live by that. Your company is built on that. And you've proven it day after day after day, especially during this pandemic. And I just wanted to create this video to say thank you. Thank you for being what you say you are. Thank you for showing up every day with compassion, with excellence, and reliability. So if you haven't heard it from one of your clients, and I'm sure you have, I want to make certain that you heard it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Bayada.